guys, I'm back again. Um, I'm being very productive today. I'm doing more than one video. So this particular video is going to be for people who are new to sewing and cosplay and stuff like that. Um, I get a lot of questions like, oh, how do I sew? How do I make a costume? Well, you can't just, there's not a short answer for that. And for people who don't know anything about sewing, you might not know what things you need and stuff like that. So I think I might start kind of doing a series on really beginning like beginner sewer stuff. I mean, I'm not the most talented sewer. I'm self-taught, so there's a lot of things I don't know, and I just kind of make up as I go, or whatever. Um, so I'm sure there's people out there who could give you better advice, but I don't know. I think it might be a little easier for some people to understand as someone who's not super... Um, and like a super advanced sewer to talk to someone who doesn't know anything about it. I don't know. It might be easier. I could be full of crap. Who knows? <laughs> so, first off, this might seem weird to be the first thing, but you're on a tape measure. And the main reason for that is you need to know your own measurements. And I guarantee you, your measurements will not fall within the measurements of a pattern. So you're going to have to do alterations and all this crap. We can get to that at another point, but um, you need a basis for what you're doing. And if you're going to make your own patterns, you need to know your measurements. So um, one of these little flexible ones that are a couple bucks, uh, definitely very important. What I did, um, and I check, you know, every six months or a year to see if anything's changed. I mean, I'm 22, I'm not going to grow, but, you know, other things could change. So what I do is... I do all of my measurements, like everything, like my head circumference, my neck, my chest, my waist, my like the length of my legs, around my wrists, all that sort of thing. Because that way I don't have to, when I have a certain project that, oh, I need to do armor here, or I need a dress that's this long, I can just look at the sheet and say, okay, it's this long, and not have to do it myself every time. But you're going to want to have a friend help you with that, because if you're trying to measure yourself, it's going to be kind of warped it's really hard to do so try to get someone to help you I didn't so I know my measurements are wrong so I have to redo them but uh, yeah just just trust me um, and next you want a good pair of scissors and they can get kind of pricey but I mean they have stuff for like 10 or 14 bucks but when you go to sewing and craft stores they'll have some nice heavy-duty scissors that are meant for sewing um, I mean just the basic Fiskars brand is good what I would recommend is something like, you can kind of see this gray part, it's um, it's a rubber. So when you're sitting there cutting a lot, it's a lot softer on your hands. So just something to think about. It's a few extra bucks, but it's definitely worth it. Never, ever use these scissors on anything but fabric. Get special scissors for paper. And if you need to be working with weird materials like armor or foam, if you want, you can get another pair of scissors for that. Because if you use paper... If you cut paper with these, you're going to dull them, and it's going to be a nightmare. Um, another thing that's really important is seam rippers. These little doohickeys, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure most people know what a seam ripper is, but it's just it's got this like, kind of sharp blade on this curve here, so you can reach under your stitches if you've messed up and ripped them out. Um, and... <laughs> From experience, you're going to be ripping more seams than you would ever believe. And I feel like I rip more seams than I sew, which logically I know that doesn't make sense. But um, when it comes to making your own patterns or having to alter, a lot of the time you just you kind of try something, it doesn't work, rip it out, bring it in, let it out, whatever. So I have like three of these. I keep losing them, I bring them different places, I break them, so... Get at least one. It's really important. Uh, now, you also are going to want Taylor's chalk. They have chalk in... I didn't bring it here. Um, they have pencils that instead of graphite, there's chalk at the end. They also have... They have all sorts of weird doohickeys that involve chalk. There's also actual ink pens that will disappear either when you get it wet or just with time. So you can make marks on your fabric and then you don't have to worry about it showing. Uh, that's important for, even if you're following a pattern, there's markings so that you can match up seams or you know where to put a dart or to gather um, that 
it's just a lot easier if you have it marked there from the get-go. Another kind of weird tool that, I mean, I don't use it a whole lot, but it's still pretty important, is it's a seam gauge. And what you can do is you put this little blue thingy, I, I use such good terms, this blue thingy at the width you want your hem or your seam to be. So for most things, it's 5 eighths, which I can't do this upside down. So you mark this thing at 5 eighths, and then you go around your pattern and you mark off 5 eighths so that you can give yourself allowance for when you're working on whatever. So this is just a kind of a good tool. I've also used it for pleats where I'll mark, say I want two inch pleats. It's just smaller. I can flip, slip it under the fabric, pull it on top. You know, I might do a pleating tutorial because I don't know, I find a pretty cool, efficient way to do it. So uh, this was a big reason for that. Uh, pins are also very important. Some people also use pattern weights or they use pattern weights instead of pins. They're just, I mean, you can pretty much use anything heavy, but they're the size and the weight is really it's just better. I don't know. Um, but this is what keeps all your fabric together and your pattern to your fabric when you're working on it. Otherwise, it's just going to go all over the place and that sucks. The only downside with pins is if you're working on a big project, it can kind of pee carpal tunnel. You're doing this over and over, which is why the pattern weights are sometimes really handy. Um, or if you're making patterns, you don't want to rip up the tissue. That's just something to think about. But pins, you will need them regardless, no matter what. Uh, of course you need needle and thread, and I have this nifty little magnetic case for my needles, but my friend is borrowing it, so I have some in this pin cushion. Um, I'm not really a needle master. Uh, I might do a little video later about needles, but my knowledge of needles comes from at Joanne Fabrics. They have, you know, in your Notion section, little booklets on, you know, this kind of sewing needle or this kind of bias tape and it kind of tells you what's good for what so um, for those people who don't have that I mean I guess I can do something but for me I try to just get a variety of thicknesses and lengths um, so that if I'm working with a thicker material I don't have to worry about breaking the needle or if I'm doing some small embroidery kind of thing you know I have a nice small needle for that but hand sewing doesn't come up that often depending on what you're doing a lot of the time you need to do a couple stitches at the very end to close something up um or sewing on buttons stuff like that so usually they have kits or um, sets of needles that are universal and there might be four or five six of them that are all a little different just something like that's usually good um now if you're going to be working with a sewing machine you're going to need bobbins and you're going to need to find out what kind of bobbins are meant for your machine but what I like, uh, this, I think they might sell it at Joanne, but I got it from the place I got my uh, sewing machine. And there's a variety of different like boxes and stuff, but it's just a lot easier if you get something to hold all your bobbins. And in this case, I have all these colors. I may or may not use them again, but if I do, I don't have to make another bobbin. It's, it's here, and if I need to take it off, whatever, I just toss a little bit of thread, but just something kind of handy. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the basics that I can think of right now. Uh, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, I will probably do some more videos in the future about, you know, like I was saying, really basic sewing um, techniques and stuff like that. Um, and I'll try to link you to resources of things that I've seen that really show um, I'm saying I'm a lot, I'm sorry. Uh, but tutorials that show a lot of different techniques and they're easy to understand. Crap like that. So, until next time, see ya!